What I'm about to say is probably considered blasphemous, but it needs to be said. <laughs> Anime fans, One Piece fans, what is good? The answer to that question, of course, is One Piece. One Piece is what's good. And today, as you saw in the video title, we're talking about if Whitebeard and Akainu fought to the death, who would be alive and who would be dead? And as y'all kind of saw from the thumbnail, you're probably looking at it like, did I see that correctly? Surely he's not insinuating what I think he's insinuating. I got some news for you, I am insinuating what you think I'm insinuating by the thumbnail. And that is, if Whitebeard and Akainu, or Sakazuki, or Akainu, or Akainu, or whatever you want to call him, if the Magma Admiral and the strongest man in the world fought to the death at Marineford, Whitebeard would be dead, and Akainu would be alive. Akainu would have won. And now, whoa, 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 whoa. Before you click off the video, before you lose your brain, before you unsubscribe and unfollow and just, like, completely lose your head, like, this dude's so credulous. What is he talking about? He's insane. He's crazy. Who is this kid? Before you, before you go off like that, before you pop off, just, just hear me out. Just hear me out. So... I'm not going to beat around the bush anymore, I'm going to just get into it. So, first off, Old Beard is pretty overrated. So, as I said, I'm talking about Old Beard versus Akainu. I'm not talking about Prime White Beard versus Marine Bird Akainu. So, anyway, Old Beard is pretty overrated because he was an old man by this time. He was not nearly as strong as he was in his prime. And people still say Old Beard was stronger than all the other Yonkos. I'm going to have to disagree. I really will. But anyway, I just want to preface this whole argument by saying, this is Old Beard we're talking about. This is the man who keeps getting heart attacks, the one who keeps falling to his knees and grabbing his chest. The one who is hooked up to all these IV tubes. The one who is hooked up to all these IV tubes. You know what I'm saying? This is not Prime White Beard. This is not the man he once was. So consequently, his attacks and his fighting style, it's going to be severely weakened. And now that is not to downplay any of the great stuff he did at Marine Bird. That is not to say he was weak, but the point is he's not as strong as he once was. Whereas Akainu is in his prime. He's on the rise up. Do you know what I'm saying? So let's just look at the White Beard versus Akainu fight. Let's just look at that fight. Take a gander at it, if you will. And this is really what my whole, my whole conclusion is based off of. I've said this multiple times. So you got Akainu versus Whitebeard, right? They're throwing punches, you know, they're blocking, parrying, attacking, all that stuff. But at the end of the, at the end of the day, Akainu punches holes through Whitebeard. Like he burns a hole through his chest, you know what I mean? He burns off the side of his face. Like, literally half of his face, he burns it off. I know in the anime, he just took out his mustache, but in the manga, which is where the true, true facts, facts are, are, he burned off half his face. He put, like, three different holes straight through Whitebeard. Right? You following me? And now everybody's like, that's impressive and all, but Whitebeard tanked that. Surely you can't be using that to say that... Akainu is stronger than Whitebeard, and no, not necessarily, indirectly, but let me continue on. Now, Whitebeard, the point where everybody was just all over Whitebeard, when they were like, this guy's the strongest man in the world, he's the best, I love Whitebeard, Whitebeard is so strong, how could anybody even possibly compare to Whitebeard? That's when everybody was just kind of going off, when Whitebeard started pounding the out of Akainu, and I'm not even going to lie, that was hype, when, when Whitebeard started going off on Akainu, you know what I mean, when he started, when, you know, the quick punches, he was just like, bam, 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 you know what I mean, his fist was like, crunching the life out of Akainu's skull, it was so cool, and it was so epic, and it looked great, but that's exactly the point. It looked great. 
Now, I'm not here to say Akainu took no damage from Whitebeard's attacks at all. But here's the deal. Here's the facts. In anime and manga. Like, this happened to both. This is the facts, the truth, the undeniable, stark reality. After Whitebeard finished pounding the living cahoots out of Sakazuki, and he bashed him to the bedrock, he sent this man, Akainu, down to the depths of the earth in a crater. But the point is, at the end of the day, after all of that, Akainu rose up out of that crater, and he started embodying you. You know what I'm saying? He went up after all of that beating from Whitebeard. Bro, he went up against every single Whitebeard commander, like, plus Crocodile. And he, he took them out. He got past them. He didn't necessarily beat them, per se, because the battle never really fully took place, but the point is he got past all of them, and he bodied through them, and that wasn't like, oh, I'm not talking about, it was just like, you know, uh, what's his face, it's, I'm not just talking it was just Nemu or whatever his name is, I think it's Namu, the fishman commander, I'm kind of forgetting the commander's names, it wasn't like it was just Namu and Atmos, you know what I'm saying, you got Marco, Jozu, Vista, you had Izo, who we know is pretty strong now. Of course, all the Wiper commanders are really strong. But, like, it wasn't just a no, it was all of them. You had Crocodile, man. And it kind of got past all of them after taking that severe beating from Whitebeard. But on the contrast, after Whitebeard got those couple wounds by a kind, those were definitely the most major deciding factor in his eventual demise. Now, I know everybody's like, but he took... Hundreds of sword slashes and cannonballs and gunshots. Yes, but this is Whitebeard we're talking about, man. This is Whitebeard. He was still the monster. He was still bulldozing after all of those attacks. He was still taking out hundreds and thousands of Marines. He was still going up against Admirals and all of that. But when I kind of got those hits in on him, those like one, two, three, four, five hits in on him, that was when he fell to the ground. That was when he was bleeding the most. That was when he was struggling to stand up. And even after he took out Akainu by putting him down into the ground, even though, as I said earlier, Akainu would later come back up, Whitebeard was struggling and he was on the verge of falling out. You know what I mean? He was probably at 20% power after his bout with Akainu, whereas Akainu was still totally capable of taking out commanders and fighting all of them at the same time. In the end, Blackbeard and his crew ended up getting in the final hits on Whitebeard with guns and all that, which was where a lot of the bullet wounds and sword wounds came from. It wasn't just from the marine soldiers and all that. Lots of the bullets that it spoke of when it said all the bullet wounds he got from came from the Blackbeard pirates. And that, in the end, was what took him out for good but, the biggest damage, the most fatal injuries he sustained, in which half of his face was burned off, in which he got holes burned through his chest and his stomach, came from Sakazuki, Akainu. People say their fight was a draw. People say Whitebeard won. But the truth is, from a pure damage and outcome perspective, Akainu took the W in that fight. He was the one that really killed Whitebeard that day. Without the wounds that Akainu inflicted, the Blackbeard Pirates would have had a much harder time taking out Whitebeard, you know what I mean? He would have had much more strength. Akainu was the one who really drained his life force. Akainu was having a lot of injuries from that, but he was still perfectly capable of taking on commanders. 16 of them, plus some former warlords. And he bodied through Marco? He bodied through Jinbei? He still had all that strength left. He wasn't even bleeding that much. That is why I think if they had both just been in a one versus one, continually fighting and battling with no distractions, I kind of would have taken the W. Because even in their fight, he still did way more damage and Whitebeard took it way worse. 
Akane was not somebody to be underestimated. He's one of the strongest characters in the series. No cap, no doubt. Don't sleep on Akane. And I know a lot of you are still going to be like, this guy's stupid. Wipe your body, Akane. Old Beard was stronger than Akane. This man dumb. He creditless. Stupid. 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 You want to think that? Go ahead. But I've said my piece. This is the opinion I've had for a while, but I'm actually just gonna say it out to the world now, you know what I'm saying? But anyway, that's the end of the video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy my content and only if you enjoy my content, like this video, subscribe, and turn on notifications for more One Piece content, and don't forget to join my Discord server. Link's gonna be in the description. Full disclosure, it's kind of dying. I need more members and I need y'all help. Join my server, man. I'll see y'all in the next video.